and that we celebrate the homecoming of Brother Edward Taylor Sr. It is a duty, and we thank God for the privilege of knowing him these number of years. So as we gather today, we gather just to lift up the Lord. And to the family, we say to you that God is always on your side. We just have to learn to believe that no matter what comes, God is able to deliver. So we thank and we praise God. At this time, I'm going to turn these and remaining portion of these services over into our officiating officer of these services, the Reverend Harriet Massengill, the fine pastor of New Beginning Christian Church, Reverend Massengill. This is truly a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Edward Taylor. To his wife, Rachel Taylor. To his sons, to his daughters, to his mother, his sister, his brother, his grandchildren, and the one great grandchildren, to his brother in laws, sister in laws, to this pastor, Reverend Smalls, who come, who will come and Give us words of comfort as we go through this day, these hours of sorrow and pain. We are lifting you up, Rachel, in prayer. Knowing that all things work together for the love of God who is Christ Jesus. Our program will be followed as outlined it's opening hymn number 381, There Is Not a Friend. And I'm here to tell you there is not one like the lowly Jesus. Invocation from Reverend John Taylor, Mount Zion, AME, Greenville Pastor. Old Testament Scripture, Reverend Jalen Burroughs. New Testament Scripture, Reverend Bernitha Pittman Wynn. We ask that you govern yourselves accordingly, and it's under circumstances like these, it's kind of hard to tell you not to cry, not to grieve. But I just want you to know that when you cry, you cry in hope, knowing that Christ Jesus is the only answer. Hymn number 381, we ask that you join us in singing this old familiar hymn. For those of you who may have it printed on the program or a bulletin, there is not, is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else can heal all our soul diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide us Jesus to the end. Jesus knows all about our struggles. And he will guide us till the day. Like the lowly Jesus sang and no, not one, no, not one, was there a gift like the Savior give us? No, not one, no, not one. like 
stretch my hand to thee no other help I know if thou withdraw thyself from me or whither shall I go almighty and everlasting thou art God whom we move and breathe and have our being we come again Lord in your divine presence Realizing that we are not worthy yet to stand here, yes. but because of your grace and mercy, yes. you have yet afforded us the privilege. Yes. And Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you. Your word said, Lord, that in all things we ought to give thanks. Yes. And Father, we give thanks right now. Thank you, Lord, for how you have watched over us. From the rocking of our cradle to behold his present time. Lord, we thank you right now because you are God and beside you there is no other. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you because you are a non-forgetting God. You always have us on your mind. And Heavenly Father, we thank you right now because we have a privilege to see to come calling on your holy and righteous name. We know, Lord, that if we call you, we thank you that you will hear our prayer. And Father God, we need you right now. Heavenly Father, this family needs you. Father God, this community needs you. This church needs you right now. The pastor needs you. Oh, mercy for God, all of the world needs you right now. Heavenly Father, we need you because we know there are things we do not understand. And Father, have mercy. In our misunderstanding, we might have asked you the question why. But Lord, please forgive us for the lack that we have. Father God, I know you are able to help us understand all things. There is a peace that passes all understanding. And it cannot come from man, but it will come from you. Father, I'm not telling you nothing that you don't know today. Because this is your work. This is your hand. And Father, I'm glad today that if you done it, you will take us through it. So Father, I thank you. Thank you for Edward. Thank you for the time we had with him. Thank you for his faith, Lord. Thank you for his confession. Thank you for what you allowed us to experience. And now, God, we also thank you that you had a place. When this world couldn't afford him a home any longer, you had a place, a place where he could go where trouble would touch him no more. And Father God, we look with hope to one day come to that blessed shore where trouble will reach us no more. So now, Lord, hold us in the hall of your hand. Take this preacher and mold him, if you will, give him words of comfort and conviction because somebody yet need to find salvation. And Lord, when we done with the trouble of this world, give us a home where trouble will be with us no more. These blessings we ask in the blessed name of Jesus to Christ. And we call it done by faith. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. And amen. And let the people of God say amen. amen. Somebody else say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. During times like these, 
There's a scripture from the book of Psalms 23rd. And it says, For the Lord is my shepherd. Uh -huh. I shall not want. Uh -huh. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Uh -huh. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Uh -huh. And it says, Yea, though I what? Walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh -huh. I will fear no evil. But thou art with me. For the rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Uh -huh. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup. Runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Family, friends, I pray that the scripture will be a touching and a blessing to your soul. And I pray that when you go through this, you will overcome it. May God bless you today. be reading and you're hearing this afternoon from St. John, the 14th chapter, and I'm going to start reading at the first verse. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house I made a mansion. If it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that there will be be also. And whether I go, you know the way. Huh? And the way he knows. Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whether thy goeth. How can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. That word sank into your hearts to let you know. As Jesus says, the only way you're going to get to him is through Jesus Christ. God bless you. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Summer skies and holly tempers all succeed a bright sunshine. And that land of perfect day, when the years have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. Oh, remember by and by when the morning comes, oh, when all the saints of God gather. Come, for we will understand it better by and by. Temptation, hidden snares, often take us unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed for a thoughtless word or deed, and we wonder why the test when we try to do our best. But we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, remember by and by. Oh, when the morning comes. Oh, when all the saints of God are gathered home. We'll tell the story how we overcome. For we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, remember by and by, Lord, when the morning come. Oh, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome. For we'll understand it better by and by.
Amen. We will understand it better. Yes, we will. Can anybody attest to the fact that we will understand it better? Oh, yeah. By and by. By and by. by, and by. I believe we can get a little better than that. Can yeah. anybody yeah. attest to the fact yeah. that we will understand yeah. this better? Hallelujah. Can Glory. understand it right now. Yeah. But we will understand it better. Yes. By Thank and you, by. Lord. Thank you, Lord. By and by. Mm -hmm. There come a time in our lives that we cannot speak for ourselves. Mm -hmm. This has been appointed to speak on behalf of our beloved brother and cousin, Brother Edward yes, Taylor. Brother. Lord have mercy. Yes, Lord. From the church, his cousin is also his leader. And because he's unable to be here, Lysentuate Presley is going to speak on his behalf. Amen. Pouring from Patience Taylor, who is his granddaughter. And from the family, Sister Carolyn Taylor Davis and Brother Edward Taylor Jr., his son. And we go follow in that order. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, church. Amen. Brother Edward Taylor, Sr., a kind, gentle giant. He joined Jerusalem Amy Church when it was customary at the age of 12 to join. He accepted Christ at an early age, and he continued on until his demise. When he was at the church, he worked as a junior steward, and he was a former member of the second adult choir. I can remember when we were children playing at our grandmother's house. You know how children are. We all get a little rambunctious at times. But Brother Taylor's demeanor was always gentle, always calm, always quiet. He was never the one to out talk the other. He always had a sweet, common spirit. He would carry these same traits into adulthood. When I look at the scripture of Titus 3, 1 and, two, uh, 1 and 2, it reads as thus, remind them to be submissive to rules and authority, and that he was. To be obedient, to be ready for ever good work. He was a good worker. He was a dedicated, truck driver. To speak evil of no one to avoid quality. You never knew Edward to be in anything that, that was disruptive or anything that had trouble with it. To be gentle and to show perfect courteous toward all people. He was, that was Edward. That was Edward's example. That was Edward's legacy. Uh -huh. Brother Edward was a family man. Mm -hmm. He loved his family. Yes, he As a son, he loved his mother. Yeah, yeah. And Bessie, he loved you. Yeah. Father, his children, he loved them all. As a grandfather, as a brother, as an uncle, as a cousin, and a friend. Mm -hmm. That was just Edward. Edward. And finally, as a husband. Rachel, his loving wife of yeah. over 41 years, yeah. he loved you. Yeah. Yeah. He loved you because whenever you see one, most of the time you see the other. And he will talk about his racing. Sister Rachel, when things get you down, remember Matthew 11, 28 and 30. It says, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and I will, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. 
family, my family, put all your trust in our God and yeah. Savior. Because he is the only one that could see us through. Sister Rachel wanted me to read this poem. That's from her. But it reads as thus. I'll take off the glasses. Sometimes I sit quietly, reflecting for a while, imagining your voice, your face, your warm and loving smile. For it's so lovely to recall the happy times we've had yeah. when you played such a special role as both husband and dad. And at this very special time, I only wish you knew that I'll give all the world today for one more hour with you. But I shall have memories, and since we have been apart, it comforts me to know so much to know that you are right here in my heart. The day you left and gained your wings, my heart was broken in two. I wish you could have stayed with me, but heaven needed you. You left me with memories, and I love you dearly still. No matter how much time goes by, you know I always will. You were a very special person with kindness in your heart mm -hmm. and the love we had together. Uh -huh. Grow stronger, now we are apart. I know I cannot bring you back, although I wish it every day. But a piece of me went with you yeah. the day you went away. Love your loving wife, Rachel. For the cards, I'm just going to read one from the church, and it reads as such. Rest in his faithfulness. In the ever-changing circumstances of life, there's a faithful, never-changing God in control. Every day begins and ends with his purpose. There is a detail that, that escapes his eye, a trial that doesn't touch his heart, or a single experience beyond his compassion. Every moment of your life is in his care. And I pray that he give you overwhelming peace and hope today. With sincere love and prayers for strength and healing, Reverend Jerry Small Sr. and the Jerusalem AME Church family. The family of Brother Edward Taylor Sr. The family of the late brother Edward Taylor Sr. wishes to express their sincere appreciation for the many acts of kindness shown during the passing of their loved one. Your prayers, visits, telephone calls, and all the other expressions of sympathy has been a great comfort during our bereavement, and it will be greatly remembered. May God bless you in a special way. The family. As many of you can perhaps come under the tent as possible, out of the rain, if you possibly can, try to draw it close, if you possibly can. Let's come up, up, a little distance in between the two of you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mm. Do I think you always be when I was small, you took the time to bounce me on your knees. As I grew older, you were there. I only had to call. I knew that I could count on you. You would never let me fall. So many hard times in my life, you helped me to get through. I'm so glad God gave me a grandfather just like you. I thought I was ready to do this, but I can't, so my son is going to do it for me. Give the thanks to God 
who's the head of my life and household, to Reverend Smalls, church family, to the family, my family, friends, colleagues, acquaintances. We are here gathered today, here mourning death, but more than that, celebrating life. Uncle Edward. Uncle Edward was more than just a name under the sound of my voice. Uncle Edward was a husband, a father, grandfather, uncle, brother, devoted Christian, a hard-working, honorable, understanding, kind heart, and a steward of family togetherness. He was the family enforcer. As a kid, I can remember plenty of times where I received threats that if I didn't get my act together or stop doing what I was doing that was wrong, the famous words were, gonna call Edward. And all of you know, um, Uncle Edward had the hands of steel when he struck you, but he had the heart of gold. If he couldn't help you, he wouldn't hurt you. Uncle Elwood brought in my interpretation of what it meant to be a man. He was not a man of many words, but instead let the work speak for him. This is not a time to bow our heads in sorrow, but a time to rejoice at the pinnacle being Uncle Elwood was. To the family, stay together, pray together. Love on one another every second humanly possible because we are all on borrowed time. That is what Uncle Elwood would want. Uncle Elwood showed out and he deserves a job well done. He will forever live on in the hearts of all the many lives that he's touched. Along his journey here on earth, take your rest, Uncle Elwood. We love you, but God loves you best. I think that was uh, very well said. You know, I, all, all the words that you had in there, I think, you know, you spoke for on behalf of everybody in here, of knowing him, you know. I got a lot going on, though. I had a lot going on the whole week. So I'm going uh, to get these last words right here. And um, I call this uh, Words for My Dad. <clears throat> Just a PSA. These words are filled with pain. It hurts me every time I hear your name. But then I realize we carry that the same. January 10th, my life took a turn. As I watched you in pain, I got more concerned. I looked at my mom and I could tell she was nervous. So I walked over to her, confident and told her, don't worry. As we rode on that day, it was mutual feelings. Every time you moan, we both called on Jesus. From that point, nothing I can remember, but I know we made it there in record time, so I know God carries his children. One last look to check on you. Knowing from the outside, there was nothing I could do. You smiled in relief, and I continue to pray not knowing minutes later, my whole life would change. I cried in pain and disbelief as the doctors told me you were deceased. No doubt I knew you put up a fight until God took your hand and gave you that special invite. These few last words I like to say, and if y'all can all bear with me, Daddy, I love you. With all my insides, my last words, do me one good favor. Sing loud on that heavenly choir.
we have heard accolades from children, from sisters, nephews, different ones. We have heard a resolution from words from the church. We have heard songs being sung. We have heard prayer being made, scriptures being read. Now it's time to come to hear from, from the Lord. Reverend Jerry Smalls, the pastor of Jerusalem Amy Church, will come and tell us what does say the Lord. And I do ask you to pray for him. Because we are a family. And when one hurt, all hurt. When one cry, all cry. When one grieve, all grieve. So we ask in your prayers for each and every one of us. And I'm asking you especially to pray for his daughter, Trina. We call her Ning. And I don't know how come I said Teresa. I said Trina, but Teresa. We pray God for her today. As hard as it is for us, it's hard for her as well. So we ask in your prayers as Sister Mary McCullough come with the song of her choice, following the song from Sister Mary McCullough. The next voice is going to be that of Reverend Jerry Smalls, pastor of Jerusalem, AME Church. Sister McCullough. What it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine I can only imagine To be surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in of you be still Will I stand in your presence Or to my knees will I fall Will I sing hallelujah Will I be able to speak at all I can only imagine Yeah I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine, yeah when all I would do is forever, forever worship you, I can only imagine, I can only imagine to be surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus or and of you be still will i stand in your presence or to my knees will i fall will i sing hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine to be surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in love you be still Will I stand in your presence Will I fall or will I sing Hallelujah Will I be able to speak at all I can only imagine Yeah I can only Father God, in the name of Jesus, into your presence and your presence alone. For you know our hearts right now. We realize that you are God and there is none like you. So we ask for strength. We ask that you give us a peace within our hearts. A peace that passes all understanding. Father, we come because we realize that without you we could do nothing but with you all things are possible we pray heavenly father for our sisters and our brothers this hour because God you're the only one that have the strength to help us to see us through this time this storm God we come because we realize that if you don't help us we'll never make it Help us to always remember your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. You promised us, oh God, in your word, that you will never put more upon us than we are able to bear. You even told us that even in the midst of whatever we're going through, that you will be by our side. So God, we ask you, remember us this hour and bless us that we may hear, we may understand and that we may honor you even in spite of the rain, in spite of the cold, in spite of the occasion, God is still in control. He can do what no other power can do. And he has brought us safely thus far to the family words of encouragement you've heard the scripture read in John the 14th chapter when Jesus was speaking but as I focus in on one verse that will sum it up Jesus said unto him the sixth verse I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. For the family, the Lord dropped this in my heart. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. When Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, you who believe in God, you believe also in me. Why did Jesus say believe in me? Why? Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection. He wanted us to know that if a man dies, 
he shall live again Amen. if his life is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. The truth of the word of God tells us that if we accept and receive the gift of God, Jesus told us in the second verse, he said, in my father's house. He said, there are many mansions. He told us that God has a place prepared for all of us if we receive Jesus. You see, Brother Edward received, I heard, at an early age. So he had time to send up his timber. He had time to make way for this day which is to come because I assure all of us here, as sure as you're born, you are going to die. You're going to give up this life one day. And where will you be in the judgment? Jesus said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. And he said, if it were not so, he said, I wouldn't tell you. In other words, he came, us, came to tell us the truth. He came to tell us that we have a mansion prepared not by hand, but by God. In order to get there, again, we must accept Jesus as our personal Savior. You see, many times we think this world has it all for us. But I'm here to tell you that's a lie from the devil. You've got to be ready to accept them at whatever age you are right now. You've got to hear the word of God. The truth of the word of God means that he will see you through no matter what happens. But you've got to be willing to trust him. He said there are many mansions. And he told them the truth. But here's what he said. He said, I go. I have a job to do. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. That wherever Jesus is, Jesus said that's where you can be also. It's not a definite thing unless you have Christ in your life. You see, we can sit back and say, I'm on my way to heaven, but there got to be some life living behind it. You see, you can't get to heaven on a flowery bed of ease. You can't get to heaven riding on somebody else's testimony. You can't get to heaven just saying, I believe. There's got to be a, a change. The truth of the word is that he came to make a change in our lives. He promised us and he laid out for every one of our lives a certain time and space how long we are going to live. And when that time is up, it's time for us to meet the master. And all of us must understand how are you going to meet him? The truth of the word of God tells us that if Christ is not in your life, and it might sound harsh to some of us, but you're hell bound. You see, I want to meet daddy. I'm going to put myself in your place. I want to meet daddy. I want to meet my husband. But you know, if I don't know Christ, I'll never see him again. I want to see my uncle, but if I don't know Christ and never accepted him, I could never see him again. God has ordained a format, and we must abide by his format. And his format is the plan of life. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, that I may receive you. You see, you can't come to God the Father unless you come through God the Son. In other words, you got to have Christ in your life. I know some of us say, my, my friends don't go along with all of that. This ain't about your friends. This ain't about those you hang out with, those you put so much story in. This is about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because you see, when you get to this point, this point, your friends can't do you a bit of good. When you are at this point, if I have not lived a life that's pleasing before God, no one can put me in heaven. The work that I do is going to have to speak for me. Jesus told him, and he said, where I go, you know where I'm going. Listen to the disciples. He said, Jesus, if you let me paraphrase, he said, Jesus, we don't even know where you're going. How can we know how to get there? 
Many times we sit back and wonder, how am I going to make it in life? Yeah. I come to tell you the truth, the whole truth, yeah. and nothing, yeah. but, nothing but, the but the truth. The only way you and I are going to make it in this life, we're going to have to turn all of our problems, all of our trials, all of our tribulation. We're going to have to turn our lives over to Jesus. And if you turn it over to Jesus, I guarantee you, I promise you, God will make a way. If you give your life over to him, God will see you through. There will be hills. There will be mountains. There will be pitfalls along the way. But God will take you through if you just trust him along the way. Yes, this is a hardship. Yes, it hurts. Yes, you're going to cry. But I'm here to tell you, weeping only endure for a night. But God said, joy, 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 unspeakable joy. It comes in the morning. And you cannot have that joy unless you got Jesus in your life. He's looking out for his children. God is making a way every day for each and every one of us. But you're going to have to trust God. The scriptures say, cast all your cares. Not just some of it. All your cares on him. Why? Because he said, I care for you. He says, I love you. I will make a way that you're able to endure. But you've got to keep your hand in God's hand. And to those of us who do know Christ, he wants us to know the truth of the word is this. You have been called to live a life that's pleasing. Because somebody is watching you. Somebody has their eye trained on you because I can say that if Brother Ed would make it yes. through following Christ, I can make it too. Yes. The word of God must take a place in your life, in my life, that we glorify God in everything that we do. God says, I am the good shepherd. I'll lead you. I'll guide you. I'll be your strength if you just trust me. He said, I'll be there with you in the quiet moments when everybody leaves you. God says, I'll speak to you in the midnight hours. And when you feel like you're about to give in, God says, I'll strengthen you along the way. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Our God will make a way out of nowhere. We pray for you. We pray for everyone here today. If you don't know Christ, get to know him. If you don't know him, find somebody you can talk to. And in this family, there's enough ministers in this family who have lived a life that you can look to, that you can call upon to get your life right. God is looking for imperfect people that he will perfect. And we have no excuse. The truth, the whole truth, Amen. and nothing but the truth. Yes, Lord. Amen. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and is full of trouble. Come forth like a flower and withers and flee like a shadow. And contend us not, in the midst of life we are in death. But of whom may we seek for secure, but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord God, most holy, O Lord, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not unto the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secret of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayers. For spare us, Lord most holy, O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not at our last hour, for any pains of death to fall from thee. Let us say amen. Amen. For as much as it pleased the Almighty God and his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection and the day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth, and the sea, 
shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto our long glorious body, according to the mighty workings whereby we are able to subdue all things unto him. I heard a voice from heaven said unto, unto me, Right from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so say the Spirit, for they rest from their labors and their works to follow them. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Let us pray together as one, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, and whom whosoever believeth shall live, Though he die, and whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall not die eternally. We beseech thee, O Father, to raise us from the death of sin unto the life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life we may rest in him, and the general resurrection at the last day may be found acceptable in his sight, and receive the blessing which thy well-beloved Son shall pronounce to all that love and fear thee, saying, Come ye blessed of my Father, yes. receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Mm -hmm. Grant this, we beseech thee, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Amen. 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 Family, we very, very, very missed. We also know God is wise. Let's be most of these trying difficult times. We actually trust in him. Again, on behalf of family allow me to just express their thanks appreciation for all that the kind has done or shown during the loss of Mr. Edward. Uh, on behalf of myself and my entire staff, thank you so much for trusting Mr. Edward in our care. But you know about our service meant your approval. Family and friends, I say to you at this moment and this time as we go through this difficult and trying time, we know not what tomorrow holds, we know not what 2021 holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. Yeah, so yeah. Who holds 20 Continue to trust in God. Continue to be safe and thank you all so much for wearing your mask. And continue to do that because this is one way God has put here to help preserve Amen. us. So thank you so much as we depart. We're going to play one of my favorites. The skies will open up for Mr. Edward as we as depart. We let the ministers exit first and family members. Again, we thank you. May God bless you. And as all, let's maintain it. Be safe. Thank you so much.